Check. All right. Welcome to Terrapin Crossroads 1975. All right. So um, we're going to start off with, uh, like every year in the Billboard Top 10, there was the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so while the Grateful Dead were being mad scientists trying to create blues for Allah, this is what was in the Billboard Top 10. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by Elton John. Mandy by Barry Manilow. <laughs> blues for Allah, Mandy, Blues for Allah. <laughs> uh, You're No Good by Linda Ronstadt. Black Water by the Doobie Brothers. Doobie Brothers, my first concert in 1975. Shining Star by Earth, Wind & Fire. Sister Golden Hair, America. Love Will Keep Us Together, Captain and Tennille. Jive Talking by the Bee Gees. Get Down Tonight by Casey and the Sunshine Band. An Island Girl by Elton John. Those are just a few of them, but as you can see, disco was coming on. It wouldn't be long before the Grateful Dead started to explore some disco. With <laughs> Uh, some, of the, some of the great films that came out in 1975, Dog Day Afternoon with Al Pacino, Jaws by Steven Spielberg, uh, Monte Python and the Holy Grail was in 1975, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and uh, Tommy featuring The Who. So um, in, in Grateful Dead Land, um, 75 was an odd year as we know. Uh, by the time 75 actually started, they were already two months into what would become a 20-month hiatus. Um, I think a lot of fans were wondering if the Grateful Dead would ever get back together. Um, so was I. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was the end of 75 where um, Garcia was trying to finish a solo record, Reflections, and he was working on Might As Well. And his band that he had put together sort of was crumbling, and he brought in the Grateful Dead to help finish that record. So that was sort of the beginning of of uh, the changeover when they started to realize that um, maybe they wanted to keep making music and that was the way to go as the Grateful Dead. So, but, but backing up a little bit, um, they built a new studio above Bob Weir's garage and, uh, and that's where they recorded uh, Blues for All. A guy named Stephen Barncard built that studio and uh, Robbie Taylor, who many of you know, helped Barncard build that space. Um, I think Robbie was soldering everything together for him. He was a, ma he was a jeweler, so Robbie was the master One solderer. One patch at a time. Yes. And, and, and that, that soundboard that they had in Weir Studio was custom built because I guess the room was like a triangle shape and so they couldn't just buy a soundboard. They actually had to custom build it. So uh, again, also um, in Grateful Dead fashion, um, they had not road tested any of those songs that were gonna be on Blues for All. They had never played any of them live. They created that whole entire record in the studio in this small space. And so Phil, tell us just a little bit about working in that small space and above Weir Studio, no pressures from record companies or anything like that. It was, it was, kind of, it was very cool, but it wasn't, it, it, it was for such a small room, it, was, it didn't seem crowded or cramped at all. Um, and, uh, uh, and, it, and it's actually contrary to Grateful Dead practice to, to go into the studio with no material at all. For, I mean, most of the time we had road tested everything uh, that, that got written, you know, so I mean, as soon as it got written, we, you know, we worked it up and it went right into the rotation in the, in the live shows, because that's what we did most of, uh, obviously. And, uh, but it was, it was really kind of, a, kind of a cool, intimate experience recording in, in their live title, and we, uh, we, we all played together. We didn't, we didn't uh, you know, like just lay down a, a drum and bass track and then overdub to it, so, and you know, as cramped as it was, it was, it was really pretty fun. And, uh, it was uh, the the material just sort of sort of coalesced. I think Jerry and Bob had a couple of sketches of songs, maybe Help on the Way, Franklin's Tower, and uh, Music Never Stopped. And but it, then we uh, then we just went from there and uh, expanding all that stuff. And uh, it uh, it was really I, I remember it as being a lot of fun. And uh, uh, but uh, I th I don't think we could. I don't think we mixed down. No, we did. Yeah, we mixed everything down. I think we mixed everything down somewhere else. I know I Healy was rec uh, engineering in the studio with you guys. Yeah. So I don't know who mastered or did the final mix on yeah. it. Yeah, you know? I, I still re I still remembering uh, remember um, mastering uh, or, or mixing uh, King Solomon's Marbles, the instrumental that I had for that for that record and. Walking out, you know, 
thing. It was the last thing to get mixed. I walked out the door and got on a plane and went to Florida to see, a spe see the uh, last uh, Apollo launch. Uh, Apollo Soyuz, it was. So that, that's a, that's my <laughs> that's my main memory of it. So um, so as you know, 1975, um, there were only four Grateful Dead concerts, and they were all very very unique in their own way. So the first one was uh, in March of 1975, and it was at Kizar, which was a, a high school track and field right right uh, the beginning of Golden Gate Park. The Forty Niners uh, actually used to play. Yes, that. of course, right, right, right. Yes, um, and. Uh, in true Grateful Dead fashion, so it was, a, it was a benefit that Bill Graham put together called the Snack Benefit, and it was a benefit all the schools, and it was Bob Students Dylan. Students need a a athletic culture and kicks. <laughs> uh, Marlon Brando was there. And, uh, but anyway, so, so this is what the Grateful Dead come out and play at a, in a stadium show. They come out and they play Blues for Allah, Stronger Than Dirt, Drums, Stronger Than Dirt, Blues for Allah. <laughs> well, we were working on it at the time, you know. <laughs> And then Johnny Be Good, so they had to give the fans something. <laughs> but like, what you know, interesting show, and I'm sure everybody was like, what? <laughs> what? And Good. then, um, so the next show that they did was in June of 75, so that was March of 75, and that was a benefit for a poster artist named Bob Freed. It was the Bob Freed Memorial Boogie, and that was actually um, uh, listed as the Jerry Garcia band, or Jerry Garcia and Friends, but it turned out to be the entire Grateful Dead. And uh, also Kingfish played, Keith and Donna, and that was like more of a real show, and they were playing more of Blues for Allah. They played Crazy Fingers, and they played Help Out in the Way, Slip, Franklin's, uh, uh, Blues for Allah, Stronger Than Dirt, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was the first, it was the first, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Blah, they, blah, they played blah, Sugar blah, Mag blah, blah. <laughs> and U.S. Blues. But that was the first Crazy Fingers that they played. It was the first Franklin's. It was the first Help on the Way. And it, on, on the databases, it's listed as Help on the Way as being completely instrumental. I don't know if you remember that. So, no, I don't. Um, I don't, I don't. So, uh, um, did they, anybody, did somebody let some crickets in a box out or something? <laughs> some, <laughs> um, so then the next show was in August of 75, and I'm sure it's no surprise um, what that one was. But that was the Great American Music Hall show. <laughs> And that was a record release party. Um, and uh, from what we all understand, it was like an industry event. And you know, you've all been to the Great American Music Hall, or many of you have been if you live here, and you know it's this incredible, beautiful room. It was a brothel 100 years ago. It's got a, a sort of That night, it was full of suits. <laughs> and uh, they, were trying to, they were trying to convince people of something. And, uh, and of course, that record was the record release party, so they played you know, pretty much everything on the record, the other one and some other great things. And then the last show of 75 was a free concert in Golden Gate Park in Lindley Meadow, which is um, the one over from Speedway Meadow. Part of Hardly Strictly Bluegrass happens now in Lindley Meadow. Um, and uh, it was with the Jefferson Starship, and it's a legendary show. And again, it was also, you know, help, slip, you know, music never stopped. Franklin's came later on in the set. Truck in the 11, Stronger Than Dirt, Not Fade Away, Going Down the Road. Another amazing, amazing show with a lot of people. And people were really, you know, dying to see the Grateful Dead. And as we talked about before, you know, I think it was the end of the year and they got back together with Garcia to finish that record that they really started to realize that they really missed the Grateful Dead. And that was really where their hearts were at. I missed it the whole time. But Phil, Phil was doing a lot of hanging out in Fairfax. Yeah. And that's a piece of history, too. We won't discuss that. Right. I think, we'll, I think we'll just point out that I think they were known as maybe the Heineken years. <laughs> Uh, but they were fun. And yeah. so um, so now let's talk a little bit about Big Brown, because as you can see, Big Brown is, is here. So um, Big, Big Brown made its debut in uh, 1971. And uh, it was, it was, it, it was, it's a guild instrument, but it was um, Alembicize. Alembic, who made Khaleesi, Mother of Dragons, the bass that Phil currently plays, um, uh, totally retrofitted that, that instrument for him. And, and from 71 through 74, there were a lot of changes because of making it work with the wall of sound. But by 1975, uh, this really was the instrument that Phil played from 75 to 78 until he, I think, got an Irwin guitar was what you played next. Yeah, I think so. Um, so without further ado, Phil is gonna uh -huh. show us some things about Big Brown and what all those crazy knobs and pickups do and because uh, we all want to know. You sure you really want to know? I mean, uh, well. Well, uh, 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 this guy just went up to Olympic for a, for a kind of a 
tune up and the, docu the documentation thing they had, we wanted to make sure that they had all the, uh, the records of everything that went in and stuff. And one of the things they gave me that came back with it is a little, a little diagram of what all the knobs do in case I had forgot. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, this here is master volume. So, you know, it gets louder, it gets quieter. This is the main uh, pickup selector switch. It, g it gives me uh, gives me bass on. Uh, ba uh, let's see. Uh. Okay, so at the and this at this first position, that activates this pickup. And these knobs here, these five knobs here are. Uh, to control that pickup, so there's volume, like, uh, like dry volume with no no effects on it. And then there's the uh, uh, the uh, filter volume, which I, I can blend to my to, to my uh, satisfaction. And you can you can hear that the pickups are picking up magnetic interference. This is just what exactly what was happening in the Grateful Dead movie when when I, when I was playing with the camera. So this knob is the frequency, freak the center frequency of the thick of the pickup. This knob is the Q or bandwidth. So that doesn't it doesn't it's not that effective. That's not even that th that lower stuff. That's not even part of the note I'm playing. <laughs> oh, stop. So it's it's almost like a, a wah wah, only you have to use your hand. And uh, this switch selects uh, a high pass, low pass, or band pass. So high pass, high pass is that gives you the whole sound of the string, and as I lower the frequency, it just gives you kind of percussion or, or uh, that's low pass. That's low. So if I turn that all the way up. That's a high. Uh, the, the, the whole range of tones that uh, I never used. <laughs> somebody wrote, somebody once wrote on it, in, in a, not in a blog because they didn't have any in those days, but some kind of review or something that I read. Uh, Phil has all these, has like 25 knobs on his bass, and, he, and he's, yet it always sounds the same. <laughs> it was very perceptive of him, because that's what it was. The whole deal was set it and forget it. <laughs> okay, so. What's the deal with the um, copper pickup in the middle there? Oh, that is the infamous quad pickup. And we can't... Uh, so that's the pickup that would send an individual string to an individual speaker stack in the wall of sound? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and th this, this switch here, the second switch on the, on the bottom uh, horn, as it were, and you notice that the, the uh, quad pickup has a lot of hum in it. They hadn't quite figured out how to make a humbucker quad pickup in uh, 1971, but um, it um, this and this other switch here is uh, is the, uh, the distribution of the of the string. So the, if you think of them as numbers, uh, so uh, one, two, three, four, one don't sound very different, do they? I think 
Okay, so this one is pretty clearly is pretty set up, uh, pretty much set up. So um, the top two strings go somewhere that I don't have plugged in. in the yeah. So there's a there's a special eight pin adapter on the on the tailpiece here that um, was apparently made from some sort of machinery from the 1930s. Yeah, no, no. And uh, it was like radio station. Um, uh, hardware from the uh, 1930s. And it was that 8-pin adapter that made the whole wall of sound work. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it was the, it made the quad pickup work. Yeah, I know. We talked about this last uh, last week, I think. Yeah. So, um, I think, uh, is that the full tour of the bass? And, 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 uh, and the, this is the quad volume knob. Be before we, before we put it down, can we just get one big, bad Phil Lesh bass bomb, like, you know? Thanks, everybody. 1975. Enjoy the night. We'll see you next time. Good evening. We welcome you. On behalf of the band, we should introduce on the keyboards, we have Mr. Rob Baracco. On drums, on stage left, Mr. John Molo. On bass and vocals, Mr. Philip Lesh. On rhythm guitar and vocals, Mr. Graham Lesh. On drums, on stage right, Mr. Cochran McMillan. On vocals, Ms. Elliot Peck. On lead guitar and vocals, Mr. Stu Allen. Would you welcome, please, Phil Lesh and friends. Hey. 
With a pobre throw you say
lighthouse key Wildflowers see in the sand in the end And the flower winds roll you home again Go away from the dew Go away from the dew
Fishes rising up like birds It's been hot for seven weeks now Too hot to even speak now Did you hear what I just heard? Say it might have been a fiddle Be a beat now. I can feel it in my feet now. Listen, here it comes again. There's a band out on the highway. Band out on the highway. The high stepping in the town. They're yeah, dancing in the town. It's a rainbow for the sound. Come on, children, come on, clap your hands. Well, the sun went down in money. And the moon went down in wine. Yeah, the stars were spinning dizzy. All well, the band kept us busy. We forgot about the time. People joining hand in hand while music played the band. Well, they're setting us on fire. Crazy rooster crowing midnight. Balls of lightning roll along. Old men sing about their dream. Women laugh and children scream. And the band keeps playing on. Dancing through the daylight. Great the morning air with the sun. No one's nervous, but the band's all packed and Was it, was it ever here at all? And the people keep on dancing. Come on, children. Come on, children. The bumper crop and the fields are full of dancing, full of singing and romance. The music never
them in your home
Shake it, 
Sugar Queen roll on Take that woman down to New Orleans boy. I give up, had enough Put my blues on down the door She loves me, we were more Well, I taught that we been willow How to cry, cry, cry We taught the clouds how to cover up a clear blue sky And tears to cry for that woman They're gonna flood you, big river And I'm gonna sit right here until I die
Ой.
Oh, welcome back to the Terrapin Crossroads time machine. We have warped you back to 1975, and we're going to finish that off. But coming forward to 1998, I, that was the year I had a liver transplant, and I'm only alive today because of this young man, Cody, and he became an organ donor at a, at a young age, and, and the only thing he had to do was tell his family about it. That's all you really need to do is, because those are the folks who make those decisions in that awful time. So I'd like to invite you all to join me in honoring his courage and his generosity of spirit and, and in, the, in the spirit of giving back <laughs> in a kind of funny way. Uh, I'd like to invite you all to turn to somebody that you love and that loves you and just say to them, hey, if anything ever happens to me, I want to be an organ donor. That's all you have to do. And you, who knows? God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we have some more weirdness for you.
wonder eternity. Under eternity. Under eternity. Well, the hugging is over. I'd like to introduce everybody. Hi. Hi. American University, 73. I remember that. Okay, on your far left there, Cochran McMillan on drone. <laughs> Elliot Peck on vocal. Graham Lesh on guitar and vocals. The mighty white cloud, John Molo. On drums, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Rob Baracco on keys and vocals. <laughs> Stu Allen on guitar and vocals. Yes. <laughs>